All right, it's recording now, so we can start whenever. All right. <laughs> How are you, Andy? I'm doing well. <laughs> okay. Well, I cannot say um, what's left from San Francisco, California. <laughs> I am. I am currently in um, very close to Mexico City. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, for uh, newer audiences. Uh, this is a weekly political discussion uh, challenging the political left, having conversations as it relates to the current events. And the current event that is happening as of right now uh, is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, mm -hmm. a democratic socialist. And that is the topic we'll be discussing today. Uh, I think my first initial thoughts about it um, was it is the it is just the legacy that Bernie Sanders had left for uh, the younger generation, especially. And I am not completely surprised um, because you're talking about Queens and the Bronx, mm -hmm. and has been a Democratic um, congressional area for quite a bit, quite a while now. I think it's the 14th, if I'm not mistaken, it's the 14th congressional yes. uh, district. So it is um, an upset for the Democratic Party um, because in, uh, it's, uh, it's challenging corporate-funded um, Democrats. But still, it, from the, for, for, for um, the Democrats, it is sort of they, they are a little... Uh, in friction because they are not um, trying to uh, get too light to the Bernie Sanders train. They want to stick to their corporate funded uh, uh, candidates that align with their uh, political agenda. And uh, as, as, as the campaign really is trying to achieve that, uh, the Democratic um, Committee that they did not select some of the Bernie Sanders candidates that they um, what he wanted. So, any thoughts, Andy? Well, I think the question is 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 her candidacy and the and people like Bernie Sanders is that a challenge to the Democratic Party, or is it a scheme of the Democratic Party? Um, I would describe the, her presence within there as well as other left Democrats as more a scheme, um, a. Um, uh, really, a scheme. you're saying it's a scheme, like yeah, like a it's sort of a it's a part of a it's part of the Democratic Party strategy of mobilizing the left wing base uh, for the elections in two, in 2018. Um, it, mm -hmm. Obviously, there there are such a thing as establishment candidates, and the establishment right. candidates establish really what the Democratic Party will be standing for. Um, people like Alexandria Ocasio uh, Cortez and other candidates, there are going to be a few victories along the way. These left and the left positions that they hold are going to be held out in front of liberals and um, progressives with the aim of saying, hey, the Democratic Party is your party. We know we haven't done anything yeah. for you under Obama. We certainly haven't done anything to really challenge uh, the Trump agenda, but give us another chance here in 2018. Um, and that's that's really what this is about. It's um, as I was describing to somebody else, this is like uh, my brother plays with his dog by holding a laser pointer. Um, and, mm -hmm. and having laser pointer run 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 the dog around, mm -hmm. uh, work, the working class and the left is being run around with a laser pointer of these um, ostensibly progressives uh, who are operating with the Democratic Party uh, under a somewhat hidden banner of democratic socialism. They don't they don't like to really put that out there too much. They don't they admit to being democratic socialists, but they they try to minimize what that means, um, and they put up positions like abolish ICE. Um, or uh, Medicare for Medicare for all, uh, yeah. minimum, the higher minimum wage, the positions, met, many of the positions that that Bernie Sanders put the last time that the Democratic Party already essentially squelched. Um, those positions that were defeated by the party itself. Um, and secondly, when Sanders won the election, he won the primary uh, in 2016. That election was stolen from him. So um, and. Mm -hmm. And Sanders made no effort to expose that or to try to fight that. Um, so this is basically the left wing being dangled in front of uh, the working class and the, and the left. 
and we're running around like like a little dog trying to catch it. Um, and it's going to disappear in about five months. Um, and you, we're already seeing, I've already seen that um, uh, Ocasio-Cortez is kind of walking a little bit away from some of the positions. Um, and uh, that's just going to continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there, uh, I don't know if I can say it's a scheme. I, I think, uh, in my opinion, I think it, the establishment is scared of candidates like these because it will give rise to third parties. This is what I, I, I think. But for uh, for Bernie Sanders, Alexandria, for other like Jane Kim in San Francisco um, candidates, there is a compromise. There is definitely a compromise. I, I, I and, 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 and you're saying that Alexandria is starting to walk away from some of the positions she backed. Um, I think it is challenging, just like you have a socialist like Rousseff in Brazil, who was part of a socialist party, and then once you got into power, power, you you don't. You, you, it's challenging for you to sort of um, start implementing the positions you want to, to back. And I, I, I don't think that it's a complete scheme, but I, I think that the Democrats are going to try to align themselves with them so that they can seem united. And then that is when you get convoluted with who is on which side. And yes, I do think eventually, ultimately, that is uh, detrimental to the working class because you have the working class hyped up for someone, you have someone that is that is from the Bronx, you have someone that is like them, Latina, yeah. um, and someone who was a bartender, um, yeah. a working class citizen. She is. She's, yeah. yeah. No and question. then you, coming to rise, and you give um, you give people from those gentrified communities hope for them to just all of a sudden have another person um, all of a sudden have to sort of change and compromise to get in positions of power. Um, but I do also think that if you, it's a reflection of people wanting change or transformation um, when you have someone like her elected or you have Jane Kim in San Francisco being, um, a, she didn't win, but having um, someone like her be uh, backed by progressives and Bernie Sanders, the, the, the big um, division that was caused between the Hillary camp and the Bernie camp. And I do think that I feel my heart goes out for the people because they, 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 they're expecting to see a candidate that can speak for them. Someone that looks like them, someone that and someone that lived amongst them. And so I, I agree with you on that. Um, don't know if when you say scheme, maybe it, to me it feels as if they're dangling yeah. uh, Alexandria in front of progressives. I, I would think, you know, Alexandria seems very genuine and part of that Bernie Sanders wing, uh, backed by Bernie Sanders, I don't think they want to, uh, I don't think they're carrot in front of a donkey um, purposely, as you're making it seem like. Uh, um, I think they're really trying to shift and change, like I said in a previous video, a circle within a circle. Um, which, uh, yeah, it, it's not quite, it, it's, just, it's just giving um, more power to the Democratic Party. But I do think that the establishment is threatened by her and Bernie Sanders, and they don't want Bernie Sanders to run for 2020. They don't want people like um, uh, people um, like Jane Kim, like Ocasio, um, to 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 sort of change the Democratic Party because they've had it for a long time in the way that they've had it, and they don't want to change that. Well, when I do say when I do say scheme, um, I do mean I don't I don't really know what. Ocasio Cortez, if she's like, quote, in on it, like I, I, I'm, I'm open to the idea that she is very much like sincere, and she does definitely does have a working class background, like you said, she was a bartender, um, mm -hmm. and and um, just only recently community organizer. Uh, so, but but I, the Democratic Party knows what they're doing with people like that. They 
the left wing of the Democratic Party and the people who operate within that, they know what they're doing. Um, and they yeah. know that their role is to be is to be dedicated to the Democratic Party. And they know what that party is. They know that that's a party of attacking immigrants, a party of war. Um, like, let me be clear. Um, Ale Alexandria's position around um, abolishing ICE is to move ICE from out underneath Homeland Security into the Department of Justice to put it back under the the, ostent the criminal wing of the or criminal justice yeah. system. What that yeah. will effectively do is eliminate the, the ability to have sanctuary status in San Francisco and in California. Sanctuary status uses the division between those two to basically mean that the police cannot work in, in function in conjunction with ICE. Um, that means if she, if she gets her abolish ICE way, if they essentially abolish the name of ICE and put it under the DOJ, then essentially you eliminate that possibility. Whether she knows that or not, that's how it's going to be used. Have no, mm -hmm. Make no bones about it. She's not talking about dismantling um, ICE, uh, that the actual infrastructure that Obama spent eight years building. She's not talking about that. And there's no way mm -hmm. the Democratic Party is going to let her do that. Um, so the, the second thing is, is that when, when pushed on the question of, well, what, are, what do you say about open borders? She's like, I'm not an open borders fanatic. She calls us fanatics, open borders. It's like, no, we're not. We're for actually mm -hmm. the rights of the people people like you to come into the country if they if they choose to so the um that that's just that's one part on foreign policy um she's very much a person who's like concerned about russia they're meddling in the elections and the, the aggression that russia has shown in the european elections and saying we have to be strong for them and she's also been critical of trump in allowing china to become the essentially leader of the free world that is, she feels like Trump has abdicated that responsibility that the U.S. has historically shown as leader of the free world. Um, and so this is, this is standard Democratic Party positions. She knows those positions and she's re restating them. So I would tend to say that I'm not sure, I'm not sure necessarily about her, but I definitely know that Chuck Schumer, um, Nancy Pelosi, all these people, they know how they're utilizing her. They, you know, yeah. and, and they know they basically got, they called her the next day after she won the election. And in, in a following interview, she kind of said this. She goes, well, she had used to be saying we're going to abolish ICE. Now she's saying, well, if we can't abolish ICE, then we have to find a pathway for citizenship for immigrants. Where have you heard that before? So she's already mm -hmm. walking back off this position. And the, the fact is, is that she, the... It, the, the, there is a part of the establishment uh, that is like scared of the the left wing. I agree with that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but there, those people are kind of like very dumb. I think because there is no way the Democratic Party can possibly win if they don't mobilize their left wing base. They have no they have no fuel otherwise. Yeah. You know, but the fact is is that here's the thing is and the reason why it's like we agree, I do think we we do agree on the fact that this is bad for the working class. Because essentially what's happening, whether Alexandria or, uh, or Ocasio-Cortez knows it or not, people like her are being used to lie to workers. Like, mm -hmm. even if she thinks she's telling the truth, she's being used to lie to workers. And that just doesn't sit as it is. Obama lied to workers for eight years, and it got us the anger and the frustration that expressed itself in Trump. That's what this is going to deliver again. Because she actually is lying, whether she knows it or not she's lying, because she's, she's part of the Democratic Party, that lie about what she says she's promising or saying promise to fight for, when it is not delivered on, it's going to come back to haunt the left. It's going to come back to the haunt the working class because workers aren't just going to sit idly by and allow themselves to be lied to again. Because guess what? There's another anti-establishment candidate, not on the left wing. There's another anti-establishment under the auspices of Donald Trump who isn't been, hasn't been lying, who's been basically saying, here's what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it. And guess what? The right is going to gain from that. So the left has to stop doing this. It has to stop lying to itself, and worst of all, lying to the working class. Um, and the fact that now we have essentially people who call themselves socialists, and I believe they consider themselves revolutionary socialists, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who are now standing for refurbishing the Democrats, that's deadly for the left. Um, and, the, and the fact is, is most socialists are falling for some version of it, even giving a kind of a cautious, yes. criti cautious criticism. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, no, this is, this is an absolute stake in the heart to the possibility of revolutionary socialism to go in this direction, to be calling this socialism. Her positions are no different than Obama. She's as much of a socialist as Obama is a socialist. And yet mm. she can brandish herself as, oh, I'm socialism today. And it's, it's bad for the cause, you know, bad for the cause of revolution, 
bad for the cause of the working class, this is a definite setback for our side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, when I think of the Bronx in, the Queen, in Queens, I think that's just so much uh, energy right there that you can already harness if you were to create some sort of um, 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 challenge to create something outside of this binary system right. because they, they already are energized to want um, change in a way that if this is an upset, right, that it's a reflection, like I said earlier, that could be harnessed to cause some real damage to the Democratic Party and to the Republican Party as well. Um, but I, I also wanted to point out something about the media and all of this. I think it's a little... It's not like it was a. It's not like you flipped a Republican a district to a Democrat. Right. You, just, you just went from Democrat to Democrat, and there's a lot of attention to this person, uh, Ocasio uh, Cortez, when there are other um, self-funded um, pr um, primary um, uh, victories that were done that I think that are not being uh, highlighted, and I think that part of it has to do with just the fact that she's a woman. And it has to do with uh, have um, the Bernie Sanders uh, for foreseeing if Bernie Sanders is going to do it again in 2020, and having seen if Ocasio did uh, won this victory, that she that she is um, a, 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 a sort of like a, a come on, um, foreseeable future for Bernie Sanders because she was backed by Bernie Sanders, yeah. and if there's going to be a, a um, energy around um, him again, I. Uh, so that's just about uh, my comment about the media having um, highlighted her victory. Um, but she's not the only one. There is other ones as right. well. Um, what else? Uh, oh, can I add something to that? I mean, yeah. Like, again, um, she is not the only one. She is sort of the she is the light. She is the 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 light of hope for those who are hoping to primary centrist Democrats and shift the Democratic Party to the to the left. This isn't just uh, in that in your district or in the New York district that you're talking about. The the red wave victories or the, the red wave strikes of Arizona, Kentucky, um, West Virginia, all of them are talking about rem the slogan "Remember in November," which is really putting up teacher candidates as Democratic Party candidates, people who are from mm -hmm. teachers from that struggle to primary uh, maybe more conservative Democrats. Again, this is this hope springs eternal kind of stuff um, where people are thinking. I mean, we talked about pragmatism before. People think that this is the practical, pragmatic way to change, change the Democratic Party, and that therefore change the system. But it won't do that. It will do the exact opposite. It will change the electorate. It will change those people who enter into power. And it's going to be people like Alexandria or those teachers, if they get voted in, they are going to be used to, to discipline the left and to discipline the working class and tell them, you can't ask for too much. You can't ask for that. That's too much. You know, if they do get in power. And when they don't get in power, they're, they're the ones who are going to be used to say, I tried it this time, but don't elect, you can't elect me, I'm not on the ballot, but go ahead and, 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 and vote for this other uh, Democrat. The very interesting mm -hmm. thing that happened, if you look at an interview with um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez right after her, her win, they showed her Trump, they, they showed her a bit where Trump is talking about the win. He's, he goes after Crowley, her, her opponent, and then, you know, praises mm -hmm. her for having a lot of energy. And the thing, she went on and on and on and was like, defending Crowley, the person she had def just defeated, and, mm -hmm. you know, gave him a vigorous defense. But then when she was asked about being a socialist, she was like, well, that's just fear-mongering. Yes, I'm a socialist, but people are just using fear. But she's very defensive about defending socialism, but goes very much on the offense towards defending fellow Democrats. And I'm like, mm -hmm. she's got it completely backwards. She should be talking mm -hmm. even, and this wouldn't even work, but I'm just saying, if, if she was truly being sincere and taking up what she, the task really in front of her, she would be saying, you know, we have, all these people have to go down. But the reality is, she, whatever she's trying to do can't be done within the Democratic Party. So her first thing was she would have to get out of the Democratic Party. Um, next week, we may be talking about a candidate, a candidate in Mexico who's trying to op, op, operate outside of the pre-pawn, um, you know, um, kind of monopoly of power. I have, I have questions about even the possibility of that. But... Well, I don't have questions about it. I don't think that's possible either. But I can mm -hmm. I guarantee you, if your candidate, that candidate in Mexico was inside the pre or pond, no one would have any illusions about that person's ability to change those parties. Um, and mm -hmm. that's unfortunately, this shows how, how far, how, how much the working class and how much the left has moved 
to the to has moved towards the right, if you will, because it was only a few years ago that people would know this is not a strategy socialists can use. Um, do you, Kashama Sawant ran as an independent socialist in Seattle, has not had a lot of success, but at least he ran as an independent, and that was even had its own problems. Now you see socialists running as Democrats and being praised, and yeah. that's a real problem for, for the revolutionary left, for sure. Now, I have a question, Andy, because I, I think here is where I will say that, you know, I will... I have voted for a uh, Democrat. I said this bit in the past. I've never voted. I want to fully disclose here for everyone. I've never voted Republican. I have voted outside of Democrats for independence. And, uh, and uh, the, the thing is, I, you, when, when, do you think, here, in my question, and then I will state where I stand in this yeah. position, do you think that is it easier to challenge uh, Democrats and now, democratic socialists, there's an insurgence of democratic socialists. Do you think that there is, it's easier to challenge them than it is to challenge re, uh, Republicans? As far as, for example, on medical for all, uh, women's rights, right now, with the Supreme Court nominee, because someone is retiring, there's going to be a challenge to Wade versus Roe. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, as far as uh, um, gen gender, uh, GSD, uh, GSD, gender and sexual diversity uh, rights. Uh, on these issues, would you, I, I'm asking you, would you think it's easier to challenge Democrats versus no, Republicans? I, I don't think it's easier. I personally. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you want to? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was actually going to ask you the question and then you were going to respond to my, it was actually my mistake. Go ahead. Okay, so I should try to answer first, and you want to give me... Yeah, your go ahead. Just okay. go ahead with your response. Sorry. My first response is no, it is not easier. Um, they both represent different sorts of challenges to the working class. They're, they're the same challenge, but different wings of the same challenge. They're both, they both are capitalist party, capitalist class operatives looking to keep the working class in check. Um, so I would say both of, neither of them is easier or harder. They're the same. It's, the, it's like two sides of the same coin. They're both attacking us for using different methods. What I would say is that if the working class is going to change itself, there's only one tool it has to use, which is it's a power to take away its own labor. That's it. That is the only collective tool we have towards, towards pushing for real change uh, against our capitalist bosses. Um, and if you want, then given that, if you want to know where that has actually happened, it's been in red states. And, that, and, and so in some ways, there is, it, apparently, there is more likelihood of the working class fighting back under Republicans in the last year than there has been a working class fighting back under uh, the Democrats. And that's what's for me as a socialist matters is not what the, which capitalist is in power, but what is the working class doing? And so I am most buoyed by the, 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 the things that my brothers and sisters in Arizona, West Virginia, um, uh, Oklahoma have done. Uh, now that's about to be collected by the De Democratic Party in the next few months. So I think that's what's going to happen, unfortunately, because there's no alternative. Um, but nevertheless, it is, it is those actions that I look for as, the pos as, as giving us some hope about the possibility of real fundamental change. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I... Uh... I, you sound when you say that you sound like Julian Assange when he said when they asked him if you would choose Trump or you they would choose Hillary Clinton and he said, "Well, you're asking me to choose between two." Yes. Yeah. I choose neither. Yeah. And you know, I think he said gonorrhea and syphilis, <laughs> and I I would push back because oh, wait, can I make it worse for you? This I actually thought Hillary Clinton <laughs> was the lesser. That Donald Trump was the lesser evil to Hillary Clinton, so uh -huh. using that lesser evil crap, you know, which I don't think works. Yeah. But I mean, if you want to like put the scorecard together, I was like, yeah. damn, Hillary might actually be a worse candidate than Trump. So you can even be madder at me for that, you know. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> here's I I yeah. I think it is easier to challenge the Democrats. Uh, because they're willing to sit at the table 
and Republicans are not willing to sit at the table. They have been shutting down discussions in Congress around immigration. Well, Paul Ryan allowed for some discussion, but they have been shutting down discussions. And I think it's just, uh, it's, it's, it, it, there is that the Democrats as a, as, a, as a political party, but within the Democrats, there are these other, uh, you call them reformists. There are reformists within the Democratic Party that generally do want to, sh and they are shifting uh, the left, uh, the Democratic wing, but I certainly think that it is easier to challenge them than it is to challenge Republicans on, on, on social issues, the ones that I just mentioned. I I don't I don't know how like if you look at even the Supreme Court nominees when they vote when they they, they are they are um and their and their stands labor labor um on issues on labor or issues on rights it always it tends to be that you know liberals or left leaning um, Supreme Court uh, justices that. Uh, allow for social movements to thrive. And, I, and that's just my argument that I feel is it's easier. I would rather challenge a Democrat and to create social change within that, to create another party, a third party, or to start um, rebelling and, and revolutionizing against them than it is to a Republican. That's my position. Okay. Can I, I just don't know how it's... Yeah, it's very challenging with Republicans. Yeah. Here's my response to that and I think this is it's fine for us to I, this is we're having a debate again right this is what we do you know so I'm glad about mm -hmm. this but let me tell you this first of all the the task I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna say a few things which, that historically say why it's not true that the Democrats are easier to face in power I do believe that they're willing Democrats are willing to talk to give you a seat at the table when the Democrats are out of power because they're gonna give you a, they're gonna tell you they're giving you a seat because they want you to help them in their elections but once in power, here's their record. In the 40s, the, the, the most massive strike wave in this country happened in the 40s. Under a Democratic president, I think it was Truman, they, he, he started Taft-Hartley, which made it illegal. Illegal, that means they would bring in the police or the National Guard if you did secondary strikes. That is, if my union went on strike, like let's say there were transit uh, workers going on strike in this, in this city, if my union, my, it's illegal for my union to do it, to go on strike in solidarity with them. Or it's illegal for me as a teacher to go on a solidarity strike for, with teachers in Arizona if they go on strike. That was done under a Democrat and, uh, and gave them the power of the state to come in and impose and stop us doing that. Um, in, the, in the 60s, right, we think about the Chicago Democratic National Convention and the repression that was used to go after the activists there, all right? Or the operations of the COINTEL probe that happened um, under LBJ, mm -hmm. okay, the Democratic Party. All right, when they were trying to basically use all these things to go after Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, and stuff like that, as well as Kennedy. Recently, the Occupy movement, which was under Obama, okay, and under a lot of Democratic cities, massive repression on the Occupy movement, largely administered by the Democratic Party, okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I would, I mean, the ICE apparatus that's been built in this country uh, by Obama, you know, that's. That, I just feel like there's a long record of the Democrats in power being extremely repressive and willing to use all sorts of powers to uh, stop opposition. Um, so they're just as ruthless as the, Demo as the Republicans. Well, when you say that, I think about the Obama administration. Under this administration, there are changes that you can now log national parks, Andy. The climate change isn't put on the table at all. Trump won't even discuss it. You understand the environmental agency is is nothing. It doesn't serve its purpose. It is serving for oil. It is not serving for uh, in taking care of uh, environmental issues. Uh, at least with Obama administration, you had the conversation about shutting down Guantanamo. At least under the Obama administration, you had the discussion around sitting at the climate change uh, convention in Paris. At least under the Obama, I'm not trying to defend. It sounds like I am defending. You are defending, but I. That's fine. Like I said in the previous video, if people want to tag me a Democrat, a liberal, a mainstream liberal, that's fine. I don't care. It's challenging to have discussions. It's not even a challenge. 
it's you don't have any discussions with Republicans. You don't have any discussions with Republicans under the Obama administration. You had medical for all, and not medical for all. It certainly has lots of issues. Trump wants to destroy and dismantle it completely. Doesn't want to consider health care as a right for all, and Democrats don't certainly see it as a right for all either. I agree, but you have the discussion to have health insurance at least. Have the discussions. It's all this construed and horrible way of doing it, but you have the pathway to at least trying to have for for, for fighting for uh, a, a healthcare for all to seen as a right. I think it should be seen as a right. <clears throat> Those discussions are not had at the table with Republicans. So when you say that, I just want our audiences to know that I certainly disagree with you because you, it is. It's, it, it, there's so many things that the Obama has left us with that I abhor and detest. You mentioned ICE. You mentioned, yes, he was, uh, we've mentioned in the previous video, he was a chief, a deport, the deporter in chief uh, of immigrants. And it's not a radical change. It is reforming systems to put them and aligning them in a way that when a Republican comes into power, they can just open the floodgates again and reposition them in a way. It's just a different way of setting the table pieces on the table. But I don't think they're the same. And if we're going to discuss gonorrhea and syphilis, if they're both equally the same, no, gonorrhea and syphilis are different and they can be treated differently. So I think that if you're going to have gonorrhea and syphilis, if I find out which medically is harder to eradicate from your body, I'm sure there's one that's easier than the other. And they're both detestable. But if you're going to talk to workers and tell them the path to, to, to health is to go the pathway towards gonorrhea, then you're lying to them. This is the problem. And I'm not saying you're trying to lie, but this is, this is why this is very explosive and dangerous to do. It's not just that there's no change happening. It's the fact that we keep telling workers from the left Trump side- Trump won't allow for refugees, Andy. Won't even allow for refugees to come into the country. Uh, won't allow uh, for refugees. Uh, uh, and Obama at least considered having the refugees come into the country. Considered there is a yeah, and, made, and gave them all, and gave them all like, they all had trials to come to it, have sent, sent them back. They were deported from their homes instead of at the border. That's no difference. I mean, now look what you're doing. You're defending one of the most mm -hmm. violent attacks on immigrants over the last eight years in the name of something that is Maybe a little worse. It's different. It's a different sort of attack. Okay, but now you're defending it. So you're now finding yourself in the same position as the left wing of the Democratic Party defending That's policies. That's right. People can live on such. But that is what you're doing. And mm -hmm. if you tell people the lie that we're going to get you something that's actually fair, okay? Because the only fair policy for immigrants is open borders. That's the only way. Everything else is going to be about um, is going to be about uh, uh, you know somehow criminalizing the act of crossing across that border. When you do that, when you tell them the lot, like Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. yeah, there was a discussion, but it's still open. Uh, healthcare, that it, healthcare bill is not a health, it's not even in the direction yes, of healthcare for all. Yes, because Congress was all Republican, no, it is you not couldn't in, have a discussion with them. Be clear about this. It's not in the direction of healthcare for all. It's in the direction of a massive payout to um, the pharmaceutical companies and everyone, and the insurance companies, and everyone knows it, okay? So this, it's... It, it, Obama wasn't moving us towards any of these policies. He was attacking those policies. He was telling us we weren't going to be able to have them. And by, by accepting those, those few things as some sort, some sort of progress, we are lying to ourselves and we're lying to workers. And there's a price But he that. certainly didn't promote censorship and attacking yes, the press totally that attacked him. Obama totally supported censorship. Trump, the most number of, the most I'm number talking of about whistleblowers. The, the press. Yes. The, Trump has attacked the press like, not like Obama. Obama, yeah, then, Obama's gone after the press harder than, than Trump. Obama actually has put more press people in jail. Think you got to look, you got to read into this. The, the actual, pr the, the free press was attacked more under Obama and put more in jail mm -hmm. under Obama than Trump so far. Trump has been more public in criticizing the media, okay? But it's Obama that, was, that built the apparatus for actually making it hard for whistleblowers, whether they be in the press or outside of the press, particularly people like mm -hmm. Edward Snowden, he was the one who went yeah, after I know people you, like that. Yeah, you're referring to whistleblowers. Yeah, yeah, but that's also within the press, too. He did it in the, in the press. Mm -hmm. You had more people in the press put in jail under Obama than any previous president. So, I'm sorry. That's the reality. But nevertheless, we're not just looking for... You and I are not just looking for little tiny crumbs on the surface. Mm -hmm. We're looking for major change. I, I understand that, but when you have a person in power that at least acknowledges climate change and not acknowledges... 
like Trump that acknowledges to climate change to be some Chinese hoax. You can, I would not want to sit at the table with a child versus sitting with someone who is in complete right. disagreement with me. Okay, well, let's be clear. The, the talks of climate change that were happening in Paris were basically all that carbon swapping stuff, which was just... Yeah, another, and it's not perfect. No, I don't perf agree no, with No, 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 no. Please, it's not not perfect. It is an attack on the environment. And everyone knows it. Everyone knows that all they were doing was trying to administer who was going to be able to attack the environment at the, for the benefit of their businesses relative to each other. It's the same old, same old. It's like the UN is not a, is a, not a body of peace. It's a yeah. body of war. The, the climate talks were not a body of how do we protect the environment. It's about how do we carve up the environment so that we can use it for ourselves and for the benefit of my, my nation, yeah, which is yours. And I agree with that. So, so again, that. we're just talking about different ways of attacking the environment. So By the we, way, and I agree why Nicaragua didn't even want to participate yeah. in, as a volunteer. Yeah, it's I agree. Complete, because so, they were putting more impact on the, when the people who have been exactly. the biggest polluters were the U.S., Europe. So, and they were trying to e e e uh, put on the same level with right. smaller countries who have a very small percentage. Right. I agree with this. So but what I'm trying to say is you, you can sit at the table with these people. You can sit at the table, whether they disagree with you and whether they, they choose outrightly to lie to you right. and not sit at the table. But you cannot sit with a child or, or someone who is con potentially psychiatrically, mentally unstable and compulsive. To sit at the table with Trump, you cannot have a conversation with him. And that is what I'm trying to say, that I find it easier to challenge and to even split from the Democratic Party and to create an insurgency outside of the establishment with Democrats and not with Republicans. That is my stance. And I'm sorry, Republicans shut down conversations. They do not want to consider, and they, 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 they shut down historically as well. If, you could, if we want to about, talk about historically, yes, we have Reagan who had amnesty for immigrants, yes. Uh, it was all in the interest of what? Okay, Again, so if we're protecting the environment, do you agree with the Environmental Protection Agency? Do you think that's a good agency for protecting the no, environment? No, it's not. But it's, it's that's not. not enough. But do you think, you would, would you at least want it around? I'm sorry. Would you at least want right. the EPA so, around, the Environmental Protection Would you say we should get rid of the Environmental Protection Agency that's in the government? Yeah, I think we should. I would like to create a different branch outside of the uh, But would you do something like that? Should you just correct? Yeah. Where did the EPA even come from? Some branch, some form? Yeah. Where did, where did that come from? I don't know. Under what president? I don't know that. Nixon? Yeah. When did, work, when did workplace uh, protections come from in terms of actually having like OSHA? When was that established? That was under Nixon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I, again, there's, and like you mentioned, R Reagan was, uh, was under, you know, he, he was the one who gave amnesty that, the first round. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. It's really, it's not Democrats and Republicans. That just but are you ignoring these other issues about how Republicans shut down things, where Trump moved the embassy, which is very significant to te uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, causing more chaos to the already conflicting divisive state? Would you not agree that even the discussion in Guantanamo is not put anywhere on the agenda? I would Whether that... Obama did it or not, for the for him to have brought it up to Congress to have a discussion about it. Would you not agree that even someone that believes that uh, climate change is a Chinese hoax, is, is, are you ignoring that as well? Like, and I'm what saying do you have to say I don't that? trust either, I don't trust Trump or the, the Democrats. I don't trust the Republicans or the Democrats. I think they're, they're either telling the So you the don't truth. think that you can have a conversation with Ocasio-Cortez, but you do think that, oh, it'd be easier, to, you, you wouldn't think it's easier to have a discussion with Ocasio-Cortez versus having a discussion with Paul Ryan? I don't, neither one, neither one is going to help me because they're both, either one's going to, they're both going to lie to me in a different way. And, I mean, the, th the fact is, is that the difference between me talking to a Republican, if you will, is particularly if I'm trying to fight for, with, among, with, with workers for a bit, for a better world, like I don't fight with workers, alongside workers, is when I talk to R R Paul Ryan, no mm -hmm. one is confused that I'm talking with anybody, anything other than my enemy, okay? When you talk to the Democratic Party, and in this case, maybe it would be with uh, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, when I talk to the Democratic Party, my job is then to transmit their lies back to the working class and tell them everything's all taken care of. 
That's wrong. I can't do that. I don't want that either. But that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. So the, the place you have at their table is not so that they, that they are willing to work with you. The place we have at their table is so they can suck you in and make it seem like everything's all good. So you, you don't want a place at that table because they're going to lie directly to your face. And your job is going to be to s- transmit those lies back to the, any audience you have within the class. My, our job is to basically say there's neither, neither of these parties has anything good for us here. Both of them are trying to attack us in one way, shape, or form. So we need to be independent. And that is the only road we have. I, yeah, I think th- there's a lot of validity in what you're saying, but I also think that you're having this conversation with me yeah. as a mainstream liberal, as people want, but then you wouldn't be able to have a, a conservative. I don't think that any conservative Republican would be sitting here with you today. Andy, That's not true. Andy, Andy. That's not true. Well, I don't know. I, I, I know this for a have fact. a conversation. We Look. can have an interview with them. But I'm sitting here at this discussion with you as a reformist, as in the last video, being yeah. labeled as a liberal, as 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 most people would, and I, you know, I, I think that a lot of people are, are already going to see me as a mainstream progressive, completely fine with me, by the way. People can call me whatever they want to call me, but you're having the discussion with this mainstream progressive I than you are having with uh, Ben Shapiro, who would attack your socialist ideas. Yeah. I don't attack socialism. I think that there is a way for us to have an alliance with reformists to sort of rein them outside of that circle and to have a discussion with them, like you're having with me, one that you will not have with Ben Shapiro, one that you will not have with Peterson, one that you will not have oh, yeah. with Trump, and one that you will not have with Paul Ryan. Well, one that you can have with me, one that you can have with Ocasio-Cortez, one that you can have with Jane Kim, and that certainly the conversations are not going to happen. If you find those people out there, and you think that you can have those conversations with them, find them. Where are they? Yeah, they the shut same- down conversations. Yeah. They think that climate change is a myth. They think that... Guantanamo is a good thing. They think that, and certainly Democrats, uh, 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 there are certainly Democrats that have voted. If you look at, and I know, I know, I'm not trying to defend them, but if I'm going to come off, uh, if I am, fine, I am, but you're having a discussion with a reformist and you're not having a conversation with a conservative, and that is just plain fact. Well, yes, but what I meant is, is I can have this conversation with you as a liberal, or a progressive, mm-hmm. I can have this mm-hmm. conversation with a conservative worker for sure. But you and but you make a distinction between yeah, talking with Paul Ryan or Jane Kim. No, those people are not. Both of them, in my, in my for me, for me, because they are part of those party apparatuses, not part of the electorate. Not, but these are politicians. These are officials of that party. You would actually put yourself in solidarity with them. I, I don't. I wouldn't agree with that. But you, you just did it. I, I wouldn't agree with that. And I because I know people are going to attach me, do that to me, and that's fine. But it, I'm not. I understand. I'm just saying, like, but, but I'm just going to say how it is because people have been saying that to me. The last video they saw, they were like, you know what? It sounds like because I know a friend of mine watched it, listened to it, and they have been saying. I just wanted to say that piece yeah. because people have been saying that, uh, and I knew that I said that because I knew that that's how people are going to tag me as, and to me, it's not a threat because well, not, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm not making I, a threat. I, I'm just saying that. Yeah. I'm not calling it a threat. I'm just saying, one, that it's different to discuss it with a politician than a supporter. I see. Because I can't, mm-hmm. I totally can have this conversation, the same conversation I'm having with you, with a gun contr- with a person who's against gun control on the right who voted for Trump. I've already had those discussions with people like that, whether they be people from Baltimore or Cincinnati or people from my gym that I do jiu-jitsu with. You can have that discussion with them. You can actually talk with, about them with revolution about them. It's slightly different, but it's a total conversation you can have. Yes. But when you have Jeff Sessions mocking children crying versus having Maxine Walters, but did you, uh, did you hear what I said, Eduardo? I said children? you can have the conversation with people who are Trump supporters. Right, but those are okay. Mm-hmm. That's a very different thing. And the fact is that the left has cut itself off from the very working class base that is over there and, and actually wants major change and thinks. And in some ways, is very much against the establishment, doesn't trust the establishment, and that's why they went towards Trump, and that's why they went towards Sanders in the 2016 election. Both mm-hmm. of those two wings, the difference was that the Republicans weren't able to stop their anti-establishment candidate, and the Democrats were able to, to rein that person in, and, Democratic, and Bernie Sanders was entirely willing to be reined in by that process. Okay? Mm-hmm. So now, at this point, 
if you're a populist, if you want to challenge the establishment, there really isn't anything out there. Now, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is claiming she's, she's out there, but already she's backing off those positions. So if you really want to change, once again, her candidacy and the, and the Democratic Party dangling the left wing out again is really going to rebuild not just Trump, but the, force, the right forces that are underneath him, which are not just all reactionary racists, but are extremely angry about inequality in this country, extremely angry about being lied to and are tired of it. And, and that's, that's why we're seeing the rise of the far right in Europe. Syriza, mm -hmm. which came to power much more, you know, like came to power in Greece and made all sorts of promises and didn't deliver on virtually any of them, is responsible in many ways, for, and, and parties like that, for the rise of the far right in those countries because mm -hmm. they don't deliver. So we, as people who are fighting for a better world, like not just a little surface, hold on, mm -hmm. capitalism can be made to work, but an entirely different world. We have to tell the truth to ourselves and we have to tell the truth to workers about what's really facing them. And, and my truth, the truth that I believe, which you might not believe, is that Jane Kim, uh, Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez, Bernie Sanders, uh, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, um, Chuck Schumer, those are all your enemies because they are in a capitalist party. They may fool you into thinking you can talk to them, but that's only so they can collect your vote. Because once that vote is claimed in November, you're out. You're done. Um, and so this is not change. Change is going to be something that's independent of them. And so that would be my message. Well, I will say that when your revolution happens, I will hop on that revolution. <laughs> and I have said this before. I am going to be on this side of the camp for the time being yeah. Yeah. until I see a dramatic shift yes. in some other uh, form. Yeah. I, you, you, I, I'm not one to, to, and I have said this already, we've had these discussions yeah. before where I've said that as soon as I see that there is uh, a, a social movement that is on the rise, that is not just challenging within the, the political parties of this binary system, but outside of those political parties, I'll be the first one to jump over there yeah. and to head over there and to fight along with comrades. But for the time being, it is it is a slow movement. I don't see any any anything happening. Where are the sparks? I see working class being disillusioned. I think that there is energy over there in Queens and Bronx, as well as he, in, not here because I'm in Mexico, but yeah. here as well in Mexico. And I, and people are tired. And I, I want to whisper in people's ears that there is something outside of this party. And I hope that I can be delivering those, those little messages around and for them to be ready when it, the time does come for us to jump on over. But I think that sometimes you come off as if you're burning bridges with us or you're trying to, and I'm not, I don't, I don't consider myself to be a Democrat. I don't consider myself. I think you have to have alliances. And if I'm a spy within a Democrat, like the Democrat party, let's just say I'm putting extreme things, yeah. but like if I am, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, pledging allegiance to the Democrat party. I am simply here for the time being until I see something that is happening over there for me to, be part of that fight. Yeah. And they think that sometimes socialists sort of separate us and eliminate those And I understand because it is like we're just, and you've mentioned it before already, where you're, where the, it's almost like keeping us in check because they're just, just keeping us within, give us another chance, another opportunity. We'll show you, we'll change sort of idea. And then we fall into it. Not me, but well, maybe me if you want to say me. To fall into what this carrot in front of the the donkey um, idea, and then we have hopes up like her, uh, and then she starts backing away from um, radical positions, and yeah. then we're disillusioned again. Yeah. So I see it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I do think I do think that you. Remember, after our, when we did our first video, do you remember mm -hmm. what the subject was that you wanted to talk about in our episode number two? Tell me. You, you were saying, I want to, you said, Andy, I want to talk about the red state strike wave. And that is our hope. Yeah. That is it. That is it. 
That is our yeah, only hope. I understand that, yeah. And you were the one who was pushing that, and I think, and I was like, well, it just happened, da da da. Not that we need no, to talk no. about it, but I want to. I want to remind you that I do think you have some hope, and you have some, but it's in that. I believe that when you when people when workers give up hope, that's when they start to look towards these alternatives that they know in their heart of hearts aren't going to work. Like I yeah. said, there is zero. I'm saying that there's no chance of changing the Democratic Party, but. Um, I think this is. This I'm not, is I don't want to change the Democratic Party. Well, you do, but I it want, can't be done. They'll change you. Um, but the. <laughs> what I, We're going to put right there, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm glad we. I think that's pretty much. I think yeah. that's pretty much it to say about uh, Alexandria <laughs> Ocasio Cortez. Um, uh-huh. uh, and her. It's not just her, it's the, it's the whole left that is trying to organize around people. Like her candidacy and things like that. So I'm, um, I'm glad we mm-hmm. talked about. It. Okay. Um, so I think people should have their own um, comments to yes. say about. Like, yeah. I want people to also say they don't have to comment to me in my messenger. You know, I know who you are, by the way. You can comment <laughs> on the YouTube video itself. But people are like sending me like, oh, I agree with this part. I don't this. like. They can say it's fine. I, I. Yeah. So I'm just telling my friends that they can comment on yeah. it. Um, it's fine. So uh, next week, yeah. I think we know what we're going to talk about, right? Mexico. Yes. All right. Yeah. Can you give us um, a background? What's going to happen over the next week? And uh, yeah, it's a lot of disillusionment for Mexicans. I was speaking a lot, interviewing, um, not like formal interviews, you know, so having conversations with my family, and um, people are fed up. People are really fed up, and. Uh, uh, I would like to really discuss one candidate that all of the press ignored okay. and wouldn't allow. It was an indigenous uh, woman by Mara Chui, and she was a, a candidate for the presidency in Oaxaca, and no one knows about her. No one knew about her. And, you know, this is a very machista country, as everyone likes to say. And um, I would, uh, that's a separate topic, by the way, on machismo, but. She is a woman, and lots of working class were for her, yeah. and she was ignored throughout the whole uh, candidacy race. Yeah, um, it, because she is a threat to this government, and she is a threat to uh, the political power and the corruption that is happening here in Mexico. But yes, we'll discuss that, and we will discuss other things as well, as well, as well as um, like the violence and crime that I think people like to talk about right. in the media and propaganda ways yes. that make my country seem like what's wrong with us right. when really there is a historical context to consider as if we're at fault for all the violence that exists here. Yes. So I think we will also be touching on the, uh, the drug war that the U.S. launched and what else? I think, um, yeah. Yep. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So um, that'll be next week, uh, and until then, you're going to be doing what for the remaining week? <laughs> I will be uh, visiting a lot of my family, and I have a personal project on my genealogical genealogical research. I'm doing. I'm finding out relatives that I have not in, in, right. in contact that I've never met. Mm-hmm. So do you want to sign us off then, and uh, we'll say goodbye to everyone? Oh, they have to do what yes. do they have to do? They have to hit subscribe. More than like, please subscribe, and please share. Yes, exactly. All right. So until next week, when we talk about uh, all the things Eduardo was talking about. We'll uh, see you uh, next week. Bye-bye. Ciao. Okay, bye.